sampling based, you have statistical based. Well, I guess it is statistical based. I wanted to look at, I don't have your data in here yet, obviously, because I just picked it up from you guys. Uh, Brandon, if you don't mind, thank you, sir. What I've got right here, this is the results of the past, I don't know how many terms this is now, it goes back to 2010, it looks like. Uh, of that random rectangles problem you did in your in your sampling project where you had to go look at a bunch of rectangles to figure out the area. It was related to the Inigo Montoya problem from 243, average length of, hello, my name is Inigo Montoya, average length of year. It's related to that, same kind of thing, 100 rectangles, guess the area. So what I did was I plotted, I plotted the results of this experiment just to kind of show you the importance of random sampling. So the blue histogram across the front here is what I call the 10 second guess. That's when the thing opened up and you're like, ah! and it clicked <laughs> off and you had to guess what the area was. Chances are, you got to the end of 10 seconds and you really didn't have much of an idea. So you kind of ballpark a shot out there. And this is the result. I mean, four or below, four to five, five to six, six to seven, seven to eight, and they're, but they're buttoned up against each other. Because I told you, I think I told you to round to the nearest tenth, but some people didn't anyway, that's fine. Uh, and so that's that. Uh, red behind that is the your choice five. That means you your job was to pick five rectangles that you thought were the most representative of the entire 100. And then the green guy in the back is called the random choice five. The random choice five is one where you use technology to generate five random numbers and then you pick those five rectangles. Now it's interesting to note, the actual average area of one of those rectangles is seven. Is seven. And notice the difference in what was targeted by each of the groups. Okay, the, the the 10 second guess is just fun. It's to prove to the fact that you really can't do a whole. I mean, look at look at this over here. Look at this great little spike out here on the right. I mean, people are guessing the average area was 13, which is believable. There are some rectangles that have like 18 and 15. I think 12. There's some large rectangles, but there are also what? A lot of little ones and twos. Yeah, I think the top left-hand corner is full of little one by ones. Yeah, and when you're looking at ten seconds, you're like, Arr. you don't see those. Your eye is drawn to the big ones. Bias. That's the whole point. It's bias. You're drawn to the large ones. You're not drawn to the smaller ones. Perfect. 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 So the blue one. I mean, it's so it's almost uniform across the middle here, which is very interesting. Seven's right here, ish, about right here. Um, so that's that was just pretty much get your attention. The your choice five is extraordinarily interesting to me. It's almost like a tight bell curve, except for the goofy outlier tail on the right out there. Now some of that I can just I can just throw away because people didn't read the instructions right. Like for example, they might not have averaged the size of the rectangles, but the rectangles number. So they may have gone to rectangle 56 and instead of using, say it was a 3 by 4 it should have been 12, they may have used number 56. So I can throw some of that data out and be like, they just didn't read correctly or they were too tired or it was too early in the morning, too late at night. But look at the resulting curve in the middle, though. It's definitely tighter than the blue curve, which makes make sense because you had a chance to, to kind of get in there and look at the rectangles. But look where the, look where the average is in that bad boy. Where is it? It's slightly too high, isn't it? It looks like the highest, the highest bit is 7 to 8, and then it kind of tails down. You've got a little bit of heavier, heavier over here than here, so you're leaning more towards like an 8 or maybe a, a high 7, a low 8. And why would that be, do you think? Say that again. The calculator doesn't randomize very well. Oh, that wasn't the calculator yet. That was this oh. is your choice, right? Right. This is you get to pick the five you think are most representative. So why do you think it's a little bit high? I mean, if you have all the time in the world to look at it and pick the five that are the best representation. Like I know for me, I was drawn to all the big ones, so I wanted mm -hmm. all the big ones. That I think is the point. That was the whole point of this exercise. Is I think that's the case too. I think your eye is is drawn. I mean, what are you gonna look at? One three by six, or 10 one by ones. I mean, it's, it's why as a bicyclist, I, I start perking up when I see an ATU ruler coming next to me. Where I don't perk up as much when I see a motorcycle coming next to me. It's, your eyes are drawn to those larger things. So I, go on with you, I think that's exactly what happened, personally. So you, you got a little bit of an overestimate. Not quite as varied as the guess, because the guess was really out to lunch. And then what I find interesting is the green curve behind. This is the random choice five. And if you actually calculate the average of the random choice five, it's actually right where it should be on average. It's, it, it's definitely wide. It's definitely wide, but that, that'll, that's just gonna tighten up with more and more trials. So that's the whole point. We, bias can creep in in ways you don't even realize bias is creeping in. And it might be visual, it might be tactile, it might be, it might be positional, you know? I mean, as soon as Kurt said he was a lobbyist, I went, ooh, I cringed. 
And I had to force myself, dude, you know Kurt. Nothing changed. He's a lobbyist now. Right? So, but, but that's the thing. But that Those biases can creep in without even realizing it. That was kind of the point of the project. Making sure that you can identify those kinds of things when you read research studies. When you read research studies. When you take airborne, for example, for a cold. You have to remember that the only study that was ever done for airborne was funded by the company that makes airborne. You have to know that. And it was inconclusive. But yet it's on the bottle. Actually, it's not anymore. They, they pulled it off once they were held out of the fire a little bit for it. So you have to ask those kinds of who paid for that study? Could they have a vested interest in the results of that study? Yes, most likely. So, make sense? The scientific community has come under a lot of fire over the past five years. Uh, they, they've made some pretty strong claims, or, or they've had strong claims made against them where you can't even trust statistics anymore. I'm like, yes, yes you can. You can totally trust statistics. Statistics hasn't changed. What you can't trust is the misinterpretations of the results. That's the kicker. That's the kicker. And part of that is you're the gray. There's so much gray that a statistical result can be inconclusive, meaning statistically insignificant, but a media source can take the part that they like and report on that. Well, that's, that's confirmation bias. Exactly. You're showing me exactly what proves my point, and then it doesn't prove my point. But you should be the whole picture. So that's where I'm getting at with, this is why I like the black and white of the mathematics, but I need you to focus on the gray as well, because that's the part you're confronted with in your daily lives. So this is an introduction to sampling. We, we will, from time to time, pick away at sampling in this class, although it's not the, it's not the lion's share of the class. Most of this class is, uh, is techniques, how to estimate, how to hypothesis test, how to do things like that, how to interpret a p-value. Um, you'll have, some of you I know I've already asked, some of you are going to take an entire class devoted to research methods, which is rad. I mean, this is great. So you'll have the a beginning of it here, but you'll get way, way more deeply into it. Uh, please, please. So on the green part, we were supposed to take our five numbers and assign them to some of the shapes? You used technology to generate five random numbers. How are we supposed to know which one of those which? They were numbered on the, on the one slide. Oh, that's okay. There are two windows that opened. One window opened real quickly and went away. That didn't have numbers on it. The second one that you clicked on, I'm sorry, it's a really texty website. I, I learned how to code in the 90s, which was kind of an interesting time. But I, I, everything I code now looks like a 1990s web page, which is like a lot of text, not a whole lot of images. It's like the antics of Facebook. No ads, though. So, yeah, no ads. <laughs> keep it ad free as long as I can. I'm trying to keep the videos ad free as long as I can, too. They keep asking, you should monetize. You should monetize. I'm like, go away. The kids don't want to do that. Okay. Cool? Make sense? All right. So, let's do this.